Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and thank you so much for joining me. This project, well, it means a bit more to me than your average project on this channel. And why is that? Well, for the last 21 years, I have worked for a company called Publix Supermarkets. And I'm gonna show you a picture real quick. Here is the sign that is out front of a brand new store, grand opening happening down in South Florida in about a week. All right, so what I'm supposed to do is replicate this sign out of wood make it, distress it, however I need to do it, and it's gonna be front and center when people walk in for the grand opening. So, I'm honored to bring you this project. I got a little bit of work ahead of me. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it, but you're gonna join me on this journey, and let's make this happen. Let's go. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me, and let's just jump into this project. This should be a fun one. Okay, so you see here I got some lettering. I picked these letters up at my local craft store. They're made of cardboard, and they are the absolute perfect size for what I need. The next step is to take some Tyvek house wrap tape and border the entire surface of all the letters. This is gonna make a temporary mold for in which I can actually pour the resin into. I'm taking my time, I'm using an ice pick to get into all the nooks and crannies and then I'm putting some CA glue to kind of seal everything up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix a two part epoxy resin. I'm gonna add some blue dye to it because I have to replicate those letters on the sign outside which kind of looks like a glass color so I'm hoping this works pretty well and as you can see, it's a beautiful color and I think we'll have no problem matching it. I got the molds all ready to go and one batch equals five letters. As it turns out, the thickness is just about perfect. It's about 3 eighths of an inch. Everything looks like it's going according to plan. Man, that's beautiful. All right, these look great. We're gonna let these cure for a full 24 hours. All right, now let's go into the workshop and start building the base. I'm using half inch Baltic birch plywood for this. This is pretty simple construction, really easy. You're gonna cut 10 inch pieces. You're gonna cut them to size, and I'm gonna go ahead and butt joint them with glue and brads. I swear, every time I do a project, I think to myself, measure twice, cut once. Measure twice, cut once. And I'm thinking that the whole way through, and guess what happened? I built it too wide. So, <laughs> I had to cut it down. No big deal. I basically just knocked that piece off, cut it to size, and rebuilt that section. Now it's time to take another couple of pieces here, and we're gonna make these structural supports for the other side. A quick check for square, everything looks like it's in good shape, and we're gonna go ahead and glue the front and back faces on. Now instead of drawing a line where the pieces are underneath, I'm using a strip of elastic band, and I'm attaching it to either side, and then I can just follow that line, and it gives me a reference mark to where to nail. I'm gonna give you proof here, there's no blowout. No nails came through the other side. That is a really handy tool where you can just span it across the surface. You can see me doing it here again. Follow that line with your nail gun, and you're good to go. Like I said earlier, these pieces are cut oversized. For this very purpose, I can then take a flush trim bit and true everything up here with a router. So the base of the sign outside is made from cinder blocks. So I'm gonna represent or recreate that here. What I'm doing, I'm making some reference marks, creating a brick pattern. Then I'm gonna take a router with a quarter inch straight bit an eighth of an inch down, and I'm gonna make marks and cut those grooves in, giving me the illusion of a cinder block wall. I take my time, set everything up just the way I want it, I go ahead and make these cuts. And as you can see here, the groove, fairly straight, very nice. And then as I put the perpendicular lines in, I make sure to stop, skip, and go ahead for the next cut, giving me that center block illusion. With all of the dados cut, I'm gonna go ahead and take a quarter inch chamfer bit and ease all the edges of the base. Now to turn our attention to actually making the sign that's gonna support the letters that you saw me pour earlier. This sign consists of two metal sheets that are kind of rusted, giving that kind of rustic look. And I'm gonna to try to recreate that with this. This is the collar that's gonna rest above the sign, supporting those two rusted pieces. But I need something to keep it from going all the way through. So I'm gonna install a stop block right here with a little bit of CA glue and some screws. I made some reference marks on where I want this to sit exactly on the sign. I'm gonna go ahead and not use glue here just in case I have to reposition it. I'm gonna attach it with four screws. I'm gonna then bring the other piece up underneath it, square everything up, and then screw it down as well. 
With both pieces finally assembled, I'm able to put it together and it's looking pretty good. Now it's time to go check on the letters, but something happened and it's not good. All right guys, it's time for me to be very honest with you. As I was pouring this epoxy, I was really optimistic of how this was gonna go. It didn't work out that well. As you can see, here's one of the letters. It actually looks pretty nice. Um, and here's the rest of them, all taped up and ready to go. But there's a problem. Um, I didn't spray mold release into the bottom of these templates and I am having an absolute time getting these things out. Is it impossible? No, but it's taking me too long. This order has to be out, out of here in about 24 to 36 hours and quite frankly, I just don't have time to fiddle with this anymore. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board. We're gonna go get some more templates. We're gonna cut them out of plywood and we're gonna go with a kind of an aqua colored spray paint. And I think the desired result will be similar and I think it'll be just as good, but you know, maybe not as time consuming. So sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. This is what happens in woodworking or in this case, epoxy pouring. There's no fault on the epoxy. It's awesome and they look fantastic and I really wish I could use them, but we gotta move on, so let's go. So I went back up to the craft store, I picked up some more of those letters and I traced them out on these sheets of Baltic Birch plywood. I cut them out on the bandsaw, making sure to stay proud of the line so I can reattach the template back to the piece of wood I just cut. I then used that template as a reference mark to go ahead and flush trim all of these pieces, giving me very nice consistent letters. With all the letters cut out, I've gone ahead and primed them all white and now to put on a couple layers of that aqua blue spray paint. Turning my attention back to the sign, I'm going to take a chamfer bit and I'm going to ease all the edges on both sides of the sign itself. Now to mimic the appearance of stone, I've used a textured spray paint on the cinder block pieces of wood. It looks pretty good, but I lost my footage of me painting it, so there you go. After priming the sign brown, I'm using a metallic rust color spray paint. The color there looks too light, but it's not because of anything but the glare from the sun. As I go on and put a couple of coats on, you can see the color vastly changes as the sun starts to set. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of clear on all the letters. Now once the paint on the sign is fully cured, it's time to sand it down, giving it a nice smooth finish, and then apply a coat of clear. Two coats of clear to be exact, and now it's time to take the paint and the paper off of the lines of the textured spray paint. I left this part bare due to the fact that the sign has to kind of wedge itself in between there. I don't want any interference with that textured spray paint. And now that the letters are dry, I'm simply using a quick setting glue that dries clear and attaching it with 23 gauge pin nails. Those pin holes are virtually undetectable and it gives me peace of mind knowing it's going to hold it in place. Now it's the next morning and it's time to assemble it to kind of see how it looks all put together. As the sign goes up, I put the bases on. I'm pretty happy with this. As far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to take the bases and I'm going to join them together with a couple of pieces of wood. That way it's just one piece. That way it's perfectly spaced, ready to go, and installation will be easy. So as this project is coming to an end, I am so humbled and so thankful that I had the opportunity to do this. And here it is, guys. Grand opening, ready to go, front and center. Very proud moment for me. Well, there you go, guys. That's this project complete, and I definitely appreciate you being here all the way to the end. And if you're here still, I got a quick message for you. So this project was, this was a big deal for me. Uh, I've been with this company for over 20 years, and grand openings are a big deal for us. If you live in the southeastern United States, you're probably familiar with public supermarkets, and we are a fantastic grocery chain. Uh, I happen to be, I happen to be so honored to do this, and it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to put into words what this means. Uh, grand openings are such a big deal that when you walk into a store, they're absolutely gorgeous. Like you walk in and everything is perfect. Everything is in its place. And <laughs> to, to be selected to build something that is gonna be showcased front and center during a grand opening was a big deal to me. And I can't thank you enough. Public's leadership down there, thank you so much. But I really wanna thank the audience here on YouTube you guys, with your comments and your likes and your shares and your subscription to this channel, has built this brand up 
to a point where I'm getting noticed in the company I work with and leadership is noticing and requesting my services. So it's really cool. It's a real honor and I thank each and every one of you for that. If you're new here, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have a few more videos playing over here as well. Guys, thank you again so much. My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside and we'll see you on the next project. Mm -hmm.